In this lesson, I'm going to take you through adjustments relating to accrual accounts. In other words, your other receivables and other payables where you might have incomes and expenses which are either paid in advance or perhaps still owing at the end of a financial period. Making adjustments is quite important at the end of the financial year. Remember that IFRS, or the International Financial Reporting Standards, requires that your financial statements fairly present the actual performance of the business and the actual financial position. Although during the year this will all be recorded, you might find that you'll need to make certain adjustments where things aren't quite as they should be at the time of the year end. During the year, the bookkeeper will record transactions as they happen, and sometimes this will only be when the cash changes hands, not necessarily when the liability actually occurs. And the bookkeeper will prepare a trial balance at the end of each month and obviously at the end of the year. This will then get passed over to the accountant. The accountant's job is to then look at these um, transactions and accounting records and determine whether they are actually a, a fair and accurate representation of the business's um, activities and identify where adjustments need to be made. For example, where there might be outstanding bills that need to be paid. The accrual basis is what we call the system that we use um, in order to tra uh, track transactions based on when the actual liability occurred or when the transaction took place rather than just when cash changes hands. This is the system that is required by IFR. If the amount in question is accrued, in other words, it is still owing, what you need to do is add the outstanding amount to the either the income or the expense account, depending on what it actually is. If, however, you have already paid or received the amount in advance, very often rent has to be paid in advance, then the overpayment needs to be subtracted from the income or expense account. If this is done in both cases, it means that you should end up with the correct income and or expense for the 12-month period that you are looking at. It's important to also identify what the other account involved would be because you can't only adjust the income or expense account without having something else happening at the same time because of the system of double entry. The contra account has to be either an asset or a liability quite simply depending on who owes whom. So if the amount has is still owing to somebody else um, or has been received in advance from somebody else, it means that you owe them and it would be a liability account. On the other hand, if you um, are still due an income to you, uh, so they owe you, or maybe you've paid an expense before you needed to, again, they would owe you. In both of those cases, it would be an asset account. In order to identify what you're actually going to call this contra account, ask yourself two simple questions. Firstly, are you adjusting an income or an expense account? And secondly, very simply, is the amount accrued, in other words still owing, or has it already been paid? From this, you can then determine whether you are looking at an accrued income, for example, if it's an income that is still owing, which is an asset account, or maybe a prepaid expense, also an asset account, because in both of these cases, uh, money is owed to the business. Alternatively, if you have an income that has been received before it was actually due to you, you owe them and it's a liability, just like if you have an expense account that you have not yet paid. Um, in other words, it is still owing. That would also be a liability account. When you have to prepare the financial statements with all these adjustments, it's very important to work exceptionally, methodically, and carefully. It's actually not very difficult, but if you don't go slowly and step by step, it's very easy to tie yourself up in knots. So slow down, think carefully, and follow these simple steps. Usually, you would be given trial balance figures to start with. If you are, Take these and insert them into your financial statements one by one. 
If you are not given a skeleton um, for your financial statements, I would suggest that before you even insert these amounts, just draw up a basic skeleton. So for example, for a statement of income, show your sales cost of sales gross profit at the top, leave a little bit of space for other incomes, have a heading for other expenses and leave quite a lot of space there. Um, and then at the bottom, you would have space for your in interest, income and expenses um, and your net profit. Your statement of financial position is really easy. Simply divide your page into two parts. The top part needs to be your assets, which you will split into non-current and current assets. And the bottom will be your equity and liabilities, and liabilities also split into non-current and current. Once you've got those headings, it's very easy to take your trial balance figures and just pop them in where they need to go. I would also suggest that because you are going to have to adjust a number of these uh, uh, amounts, that next to where you write the line item, so for example, um, in your uh, statement of income, if you've written advertising as the expense in under operating expenses, write next to where you've written advertising, open brackets and put your trial balance figure there. Leave it alone, you will come back to it later when you have to maybe increase or decrease this expense amount. So once you've taken all the trial balance figures and put them in, you can now go and look through the additional information that you are usually given. For each adjustment, identify the two accounts involved for each amount. Remember that every accounting transaction must affect two different things. So you need to identify both of them. If it helps, as you use them, place a tick in the margin for each one. So at the end of each transaction, you should have two ticks. Or alternatively, maybe if you are only asked to show the statement of income and not the statement of financial position, sometimes it will be that you only have to show one half of the transaction. In that case, place a tick in the margin um, where you have used the amount and then a cross to indicate that you don't need to show the other side of it. That will just help you check that you have done everything that you possibly need to do. Adjust each account in the working brackets that we've just opened. So for example, let's imagine that you have received an invoice from an advertising company for advertising that has, that, um, has been done for you, but you have not yet paid it. Your advertising account would need to have this outstanding amount added. So you can tick in the margin that you have handled advertising. The other account involved will be an accrued expense, which is a liability account. If you don't need to show this anywhere, just think about it and then show a cross in the margin to show that you have thought about what the other account is. Of course, if you do need to show the statement of financial position, then quite simply in your current liabilities with other payables, you would need to include that amount. Once you have done all of your adjustments, you can then go and total and balance. Oh, sorry, the last thing I want to say is when you're doing your adjustments, tier counts can be very helpful if you're tying yourself up in knots. Some of the adjustments are easy and you won't need to do tier counts. I certainly would not suggest that you do tier counts for every adjustment. It will probably take you far too long. But when they are a little bit confusing, so for example, corrections of errors, or later on when you're doing disposal of assets. Anything that is a little bit more complicated or that you don't understand that easily, open to your accounts just on a rough piece of paper on the side and show yourself what actually has to happen. It will help you a lot. And then you can also see what accounts you need to adjust and where and how. Once you've done all the hard work of the adjustments, all you need to do is total the amounts that um, you've shown in brackets and put the totals in the actual amount columns so that you can complete your financial statements and then obviously add everything up to get your statement totals or net profit at the end of the statement of income, etc. With these simple guidelines, you should hopefully find doing the adjustments to the financial statements a little bit easier.